What would you say is the best and worst part about being caught in a love triangle between Romeo and Juliet? Well, we all know how that's gonna end. <laughs> so I'm not gonna win there. So I guess that's the worst part. The best part is that I think that I can then learn a lot about myself through, I, I don't know if I'm speaking as Rosalind or speaking as Caitlin in this. Life is a little too scary, you know, similar to art. I think you can learn a lot about yourself and about what you really want and your desires if you are going through heartbreak and that kind of um, breakup is, is intense. But I think that, yeah, you can definitely come out the other end having gone through something and having a fresh new perspective. So I guess that's the good part of it. Yeah, becoming a better artist, <laughs> for sure. There's a plus to that. I have friends who like purposely go out of their way to get their hearts broken just to make some good, <laughs> some good quality content. So, okay. we know Romeo, we know Juliet. Yes. Like, their story has been told so many times in, in film and, you know, plays. Right, uh, right. Even in Taylor Swift's song, Love Story. Yes, uh, we love that song. Beautiful song. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, how does this version kind of modernize the story yeah. and kind of differ from the rest? This story is obviously a twist for several reasons. We are shifting the perspective onto Romeo's recent ex, Rosalind. When I just read this script, I felt like it was such an interesting idea and why hasn't anyone thought of it before. I was just really excited to play up the comedy aspect of it and play up the modernized dialogue of it all as well, because I think that that's what sort of separates it from a Shakespearean story. A plus, good answer. <laughs> and you know, to kind of add on to that, Kyle, who we know is, is Kyle, but he is also Kyle Allen. Uh, he is also who plays Kyle. We know him just as Kyle. He's <laughs> <laughs> just a Kyle to us. Uh, love him. He said that this is kind of like Lion King one and a half, where it's totally oh, from yeah. Timon and <laughs> yes. Pumbaa's perspective, but Rosalind is Timon and Pumbaa. Oh my god, that's genius. <laughs> it, I have to agree. I have to agree. I love Lion King one and a half. <laughs> what was your favorite part about Kyle Allen's portrayal of Romeo? Well, what a guy. And he's so fun, like, he never took himself too seriously. He also knows Shakespeare really well. Yeah, yeah. But is able to he's do He's humble such... about it, but he, yeah, yeah he, he does. Yeah, because he does a foolish version of it here, but he's actually very educated in the theatrical aspect of Shakespeare. So, the casting was perfect. Yeah. I don't know if you experienced this. I couldn't stop laughing at him. He told me and about this too. He, I, did he tell you about when we were, when we kissed? And, and like I, I just like couldn't hold it, I could hold in my burst of laughter that just. That's fine. And it was really bad because we kept losing time and I was like, <sighs> Then that's never good because everyone's like, all right, Caitlin, you really got to like pull it together. But I just couldn't because Kyle was just making me laugh so much. There's something about he was being so serious and yet there was something <laughs> so funny about it. Well, you guys have like the sibling energy too. <laughs> like your relationship kind of reminds me of like a sibling <laughs> So the fact that you guys had a kiss, I just, I feel bad. I too would be laughing. <laughs> he told me about that too. It's funny he did. to hear both of your stories. Yeah. Oh man. Quite similar. <laughs> Which one of your previous roles do you think kind of set you up the best in order to play this role of Rosalind? I feel like I've taken small things on, on each job. Playing Rosalind though was a very new experience for me because she has a lot of intensity. She's like very driven. She's very dedicated and really fights for what she wants. And that takes a lot of, of of energy and I think as each day went on I sort of started to discover more and more that maybe that she is a, like a slightly heightened version of myself. I, I, I've been saying that <laughs> you are the version of Rosalind that has gone to therapy. <laughs> That's what I've been saying. What was the most fun element of this movie to play around with? Ooh, I like to frolic in the gardens. <laughs> Your little twirl? <laughs> My little twirl that I, that I did, I, the, the Disney princess twirl. Um, no, truly, like playing dress up, getting to wear inches of hair that wasn't mine, uh, makeup and hair done by Italian women who have been doing it for ages. You Ugh, know, I, it was truly a dream. expensive dress up. Uh, <laughs> and I loved that it wasn't on my budget. Uh, it, it was fantastic, and I'm just so glad that I got to do it with, with you and yeah. the amazing cast full of, there's at least 
least 10 different flavors of humor amongst us. God, everyone brought such like nuance and specificity to, to each of their roles. It's mm -hmm. kind of crazy. Yeah, I will say though, I'm a little biased, but I do love Steve the Courier. Like he's my, he might be my favorite. He's, he, he's, he really is. He's, I want him to be the star of the sequel. I know. I mean, let's you're, you're let's the shift producer. the perspective on, the, on Nico. <laughs> yes. Let's do it. You've got We have to do that. Oh my God, that'd be amazing. Um, no, but we had so much fun. I mean, even in the like the ending <laughs> death scene, like all of these actors in one space was just kind of a lot with all of our costumes. It was just really funny to me. I mean, and also in your performance, you were so grounded with what you did, but you brought so many new elements to Juliet, which I think is is really is really special, and it really translates like so well on screen. Okay, so speaking of Juliet, did you ever feel any pressure to take on such a widely loved, iconic role. I was honored and frankly a little <laughs> bit surprised that I was the one they reached out to. You're the perfect Juliet. Thank, you really, thank you. you really are. Thank you. And I also felt a little bit of relief though uh, when you know I read the script and it wasn't to be taken so seriously. We weren't right. speaking in yeah. uh, prose and we were just simply um, hanging out. <laughs> yeah, I always felt really like settled in mm. in this movie. It felt really comfortable in mm -hmm. a way, just because I feel like the dialogue is just really funny and brilliant and it feels very natural and grounded and organic. But then also Karen created this sort of really nice environment where no one felt really any pressure to take this super, super, super seriously. And, it, and that's what's so great about our movie is that everyone's just having a good time and it really translates on screen. We really bonded so much on set. I mean, we had such a beautiful time. I feel like every weekend we were always going on adventures throughout Rome and outside of Rome. Well, poor and you, was, you were exhausted. I was too. exhausted. Like, she, she'd make, you'd make <laughs> so much of an effort to like go out even though I can't even imagine how exhausted. <laughs> I can't imagine because I wasn't working as much as you. But you were just, I mean, you would always make an effort to go out with us, and that's, that's number one is don't be doing but that. But I wanted to, but I, yes, I was, it was the and, most I've worked. In my and I appreciated life. it, and I definitely noticed, and I really appreciated it. I don't think I've ever said that to you, but Aww. like you, you really made everyone, including my girlfriend, Kiana, feel really, really welcome. Oh, it was really cute. I just love you a lot. I love you too, and I feel like I learned <laughs> a lot from you, and like Aww. in general, kind of how Juliet learns from Rosalind. Like yeah. I just learned a lot about life and and certain problems that you have to overcome and. And I'm very grateful that, you know, it's, it's I don't know, Hollywood, you, you think, you know, you're gonna work with another actor who is around the same age, who probably auditioned for things at the same time yeah. against, and you, you kind of have this idea that you're automatically, there's gonna be some awkward tension or something, but I don't think we ever, we never felt Our that. Our chemistry was like instant. It was instant, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so are you team Romeo and Juliet, team Rosalind and Dario? <laughs> Juliet and Rosalind? Or are you team Rosalind and Romeo? I, I honestly I would say Rosalind and Juliet. I okay, very strange thing to admit, but I thought they were gonna end up together and then they were like, and they were cousins. <laughs> so no. <laughs> Not an option. But uh, I think they make a really good team and they yeah. kind of balance each other out like yin and yang. So Yeah. At the end of this movie, Romeo and Juliet sail away together. Oh really? Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. And then they maybe realize that they might not be the best fit for each other. So how was that to bring that to life? And what is the message you think that sends? Well, um, as the great Lana Del Rey once said, got a lust for love. Mm. And that's what they had. They, mm. they, they were lusting after something that wasn't actually, you know, fathomable or tangible in their young, not really fully developed frontal lobe. You know, they're very young. They're very young and they don't know. And I think that's, this is a great take on it because it is ridiculous. It's a little bit of a ridiculous story. I mean, this all happens within the span of three days or something. Like, come on. I understand Rosalind's perspective, but I think there's so much to be learned from this movie. Gen Z, we have this saying, main character energy. And I feel like Rosalind kind of has that mindset at the beginning where it's mm -hmm. like, everyone's ruining my story. Yeah. And this is my story. So everybody get in line. I'm the main character. Mm -hmm. Whereas like, like she kind of has to realize throughout the movie that she's, and we all are just side characters in everyone else's story. So I think it's a good lesson to learn. Well said. So at the end of this, Rosalind does, you know, get 
an ending. Now, do you like the ending? Yes. Was it a happy ending for you? Mm-hmm. Was Dario like a snack? <laughs> how much? <laughs> how did you like how things turned out for her? Okay, so I'm I'm happy for Rosalind. I think it's it's really nice that she has maybe found something fun and new and interesting. We don't know where their story as a couple leads. We don't know, but I think that the, he is definitely someone that sees her for who she is and really understands her in a way that I think that maybe Romeo didn't. What I really admire most about her is that she is a very independent woman. She definitely doesn't need a man to be happy and to be like comfortable in her own skin. I think that she is just very ahead of her time in this period that we are portraying in the movie. So that's what I really admire most about her. But I also think that it is really nice that she is with someone that really does truly love her for who she is.